Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Last time we chatted, I was filling up my truck with stuff to take to auction because I bought a trailer full, this trailer full, of stuff. Now, I got through the stuff that we put in a half ton, and there was all sorts of old radios, arcade games, um, slot car sets and stuff. What do we have left? I don't know, all kinds of good stuff. But follow along on today's adventure as we dig through this trailer full of collectibles. Look at that mountain of stuff. Let's see what we found. I'm gonna start digging and bringing stuff in and we'll do this sort together. Let's go. Now, I don't know what the easiest way to tackle this will be. I guess I'm just gonna have to dig myself out here. Um, we'll start with the stuff at the front of the trailer, get it loaded inside. Now, some of these things I'm keeping aside because there's boxes full of cables. Um, I have a Mac computer in there that doesn't have its power cord. So I'm gonna basically hang on to some of these things and see if I can put all, all the missing pieces together where they belong. Um, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? Well, I guess if you've been with me on my channel for a while, this is uh, nothing exactly new. It's kind of what I thrive on and what I do, but every time I do it, I scratch my head and think I'm a little bit crazy. Let's start hauling stuff in. Well, I've made a bit of a dent, although it's imperceivable. I am going to try and reach back because I see that right there looks like a Dukes of Hazard slot car set. It's a little ice cream container. I do want to see if that's in there. Oh, the Fall Guy set. Another mask. Okay, maybe I should try and dig some of those out because obviously I'm excited about <laughs> about having a look, but I do want to see if the cars are in that set. So let's see if I can move some stuff out of the way. Oh, it's a Hot Wheels slot car set. Weird. Let's see if I can reach. Oh, what's this? It's a Frosty Root Beer sign. Everybody loves Frosty Root Beer. Oh, that's neat. It's like an old uh, store countertop sign. And yet that is what it is. Let's bring that out and have a look at it. Please be complete. Please have the cars. Oh, it looks like he did some research on it. And yeah, there we go. The original Roscoe and General Lee right there. Okay, that is a pretty nifty little set. It's got the controllers, got the power. And original box. This ought to sell quite well at auction. I don't, it doesn't have the little cardboard things. I don't know how complete the track is, but important thing is the cars are there. Those are often times missing or taken out, but I've got a lot of these to go through. In fact, I might uh, take a break from digging. Oh no, I'm not going to take a break from digging in the trailer. I'm going to try and grab those last few slot car sets out because I'm running out of table room to sort on. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy today. So let's see, what else can I grab from out of here? I'm going to try and grab this little stack of slot cars from back in this area. Wish me luck, folks. <laughs> All right. There's a couple. One more. Ooh. That one's super heavy. I'll take this as well. Okay, that's good. Sometimes this job is exceptionally hard. Case in point, this box has apparently a complete Fisher Price Constructs spaceship in here. I'm not so sure, so I guess I'm gonna have to go ahead and build it. Melissa's in the background, they're doing Melissa stuff, and meanwhile, oh, she's knitting. <laughs> Okay, with that all put together, it can go. In fact, um, this is, Constructs was made by Fisher-Price, the same company 
that made this farm set right here, which also looks like it's pretty well complete. So those aren't the right figures though. That's a, that's actually a really old wooden mini mouse, which <laughs> uh, could be more collectible than some of the other stuff in here. So I'll have to go through, I know there's a lot of Fisher Price stuff. I'll have to go through and make sure that I have all the right parts for all the right pieces. And like, that's the conductor for the circus train. He doesn't go with this. Farmer does. Okay, a little bit of work to do. I wonder if I had this when I was a kid and I'm sure lots of you did. When you open this door, you hear that? It makes like, it's supposed to be a, that's supposed to be a moo sound when you open up the door. Great fun as a kid, still fun toy for youngsters to have, but fairly collectible. There's lots of adults that collect these Fisher Price sets and put them all on display on shelves and try and get the whole collection from the 70s. And um, gosh, there should be a little silo that goes with this too. But like I said, I'm gonna keep all this stuff aside for now while I'm trying to find the rest of the bits and pieces. I kind of chuck this aside. Um, however, that's the 1975 Eaton's winter catalog. And it looks like this is all their stuff that's on sale. And these catalogs are always kind of fun to go through to see what the fashions of the time were, what patterns people were using on their bedspreads and their walls. If you were doing a period piece for like a movie or something, uh, it's important to get this kind of stuff because you really can see how people decorated and how they dressed and what was appropriate. Gosh, I can just imagine how heavy that comforter is just by looking at it. If you've ever had like a, a grandparent that had something like that, maybe some of you still have like a rec room, a rumpus room in your basement with some of this stuff in there. I like the old style, like a wagon wheel lamp. lamp. You can get a wagon wheel chandelier and an, the eight piece divan sofa set. It even has a little table that goes in the corner. It's like a little sectional and it uses a single bed or a double bed. Oh, it turns into a bed. Oh, I see that that thing slips over the top. Well, that's kind of unique. Impressed by all this old stuff. Some of these fashions are kind of coming back in now and you might see people wearing some of these things now. Um, what I'm interested in though is if they have the, uh, oh, it's winter, but they don't seem to have the, uh, the toys in here, which would give you an idea of what some of these things were selling for at the time. But either way, still fun and people do buy these catalogs just for the same reason i went through it to see what stuff was like and how much it sold for look you could get uh i'll tell you that's just a sofa cover for 57 dollars. i thought it was the whole darn sofa but no alas not but for 299 bucks you would get uh an entire um set not bad with the coffee table and the end tables and you know that's when things were still out of solid wood anyway always fun to look through these old catalogs over on this table, we have what appears to be a 1950s era Coda Craft Advanced Photo Lab, the Deluxe Photo Hobby Kit. You can take your picture of your sunbathing gal and develop it right at home. And do we have the set? Yeah, there it is. It's got the, uh, the equipment, the tools, a little brush, the, the film. It looks like it's pretty well all there. And the little um, uh, developing box that goes along with it. So... That's neat. And that's not something that you see too often. A lot of times you just find these kits and it's the uh, brownie kit or, you know, the other ones. But if you collect this type of stuff, it's nice to have all the little accessories that went along with it too. Um, I was looking in, okay, that's a little mini washboard. And sometimes you come across these and people say, well, what were they for? Look, it says ideal for silks, hosiery, lingerie, or handkerchiefs. So this is just like a, a little tiny, and they even recommend what size of bucket to use it with. Made in Columbus, Ohio at the Columbus Washboard Company. Still in good shape. Double handle, use either side according to, yeah, okay. Or oh, double handy. According to the fabric. So I guess one side is a little softer than the other side. It's got the rough grooves on this side. So you can really wash your dirty old socks on that side and then do your finer stuff on this one. Neat little item. And we've got an assortment of antique or vintage tools. And I will actually have a look at the name on here because some little wrenches like this uh, came in tool kits with uh, cars or motorcycles. 
And if they have the name imprinted on them, like if it says Ford or Honda or whatever kit it might have come from, it's worth hanging on to separately. So I'll have a quick little glance at these and see what there is to see. Oh, that's a little uh, sprinkler head or a little, sh um, I don't think it's a shower head, but it's a nozzle that goes on a garden hose for watering. Just a little assortment of wrenches and tools and such. Okay, wandering over to this side, I can see he did a little bit of research on this before. It's an industrial stool dentist Ritter mobile stool made by the Ritter Company of Rochester, New York. Asking $2,200 for it. Well, that's an awful lot of money. Apparently they sold it because it's out of stock. But this industrial stool that I have is the base of that, yes. But what's more unique, in my humble opinion, is that somebody has fashioned... Uh, the seat out of a 1950s or earlier, uh, this would be off of a BMW motorcycle. It's a Pagusa uh, seat, sprung seat made in Berlin, Hamburg, Germany. And that, that's a motorcycle seat. That's a saddle off of a, like a, a wartime kind of era or slightly after motorcycle seat. So this was purpose built for some reason. Um, and he had two of these stools. It's not like this was the only one that existed. He has two exactly the same. He hung on to the other one for now, but uh, obviously they were, you know, built and put together for somebody. Maybe they thought the motorcycle seat was more comfortable, or maybe these were made for an old motorcycle shop that thought it would be cool to have a motorcycle seat for their stool. Um, either way, I thought it was super neat. And um, I think it might just be comfy to sit on while I'm working in here too. Here's a neat old toy that you actually don't see too often anymore. It's an electronic project kit. So it kind of teaches your kids about circuitry and wiring. And a while back when the boys were a bit younger, I was trying to find one of these for them. I don't know if they'd be interested in it now, but it teaches you how to wire stuff and how circuits work and you can you know make things out of it. It's got all these great little uh, instructions and wiring diagrams and kits. It, it teaches you how to wire. So what a great thing. Um, you can make a radio out of it. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Really neat little set there, and it's in this little wooden box. Not as dangerous as the old uh, chemistry sets where, you know, hydrochloric acid, you could build your own little bomb in your bedroom. <laughs> um, but that's a neat little item. And again, not really something you can even find new nowadays. You'd have to find a vintage one like this. And uh, what a great way to teach your kids about electricity. Of course, I'm finding more and more of these old slot car sets. And for me, it's not so much about the set itself, they're cool, but it's about the artwork and the graphics. I mean, look at this Simpson Sears Super 100 set. Look at the artwork on this. Imagine that even just framed and in your garage. What a cool looking piece. Back in the days when they'd hire a true artist to do something like this, the box art, now they just take a picture of the product. It's not so exciting, but um, you get the joy and the thrills of the racing. And then of course, let's open the box up and see what's in here. We've got set itself and it looks like we've got the bodies we got one complete car and we've got uh, bodies and chassis for others oh there's another complete one there so it looks like it's got two complete cars and then it's got uh, a couple extra bodies you can switch them over to so really really neat set looks like everything's all in pretty decent shape here with the plastic on it um, somebody will probably buy that even just for the artwork alone they're just so much fun to look at. This is a, an earlier version. This is Elden Road Race set. I guess I'm supposed to be wearing a skinny tie more often as a dad with my young kids. And that would be Melissa there, also in on the action. Not playing, mind you. Maybe she's just waiting her turn, cheering us on. <laughs> so fun times. And yeah, it's got both the cars in there too. So really, really nice, nice complete sets. Some of this stuff is just such a random assortment. Like this, this is a box full of shoe stretchers and cribbage boards. Hmm. That's actually kind of some nice inlay. That's all inlaid on that. It's got this little holder. Anyway, seems like an odd combination, but hey, I guess that's how it's going out. I am possibly having too much fun going through this stuff. Finding some neat things like this, well, it's kind of a knockoff spirograph, but it's a twirlograph from the 60s, same kind of idea. Who had one of those when they were growing up? Well, you could have one again. 
You put that in there, the gears make it spin around, you make these fun sort of shapes and it's complete with its box. And I was going through this little bag and I found these. It's wooden spoons. So I could be all musical while I hang out in here today. Um, I am making some progress. I'm getting some stuff set aside to go to the auction house. And generally this is just still a lot of fun so far. And there's definitely a lot of everything. We've got some board games here. And so actually that's a model kit. The Spirit of St. Louis, a little, a little dusty, but that's neat. Um, this box on the outside of it says Viewmasters. Let's see if we can get the tape off of here. There we go. And yeah, that's exactly what we got. A whole bunch of Viewmaster sets. Oh, look, it's the Charlie Brown Viewmaster kit. Look at that. Gift Charlie Brown gift pack set. And what do we have? The extra sets in here. Airplanes of the World. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, that's cool. Actually, there's a couple of Viewmasters in here. It's not just the one. We got a couple sets. Oh, there's a big one. There's the Talking Viewmaster. So you'd have sound that went along with it. That's actually a little bit more unusual. You don't see that that often. This thing is just full of Viewmasters. How fun. Oh, there's the Mickey Mouse Viewmaster. 3D. So somewhere there's going to be the Mickey Mouse slides to go along with it. And this might take a little bit of sorting. I might pull this inside the house so I can actually sit down and spend some time making sure I get the right parts with the right set. As for the games, though, let's have a look. We've got the original Operation. That is the first release of this, I believe. And as a child, you know, you wonder how a person ends up with all these different parts inside of their body. But this was always a fun game. A game of skill, they say. Well, yes, it is. We have... Okay, we'll take this out. Look at that. Great artwork on that box, too. The Spirit of St. Louis. It's a balsa wood set. So it actually would probably build up quite large. Can be built to fly with a gas or rubber-powered engine. Hmm, that's neat. And what's this? Screaming Eagles roaring to combat with this action-packed assault game. I don't think I've ever played that one before. Hmm. I'll set that over here. This is a German game. The original player's game. Minch. Um, something or not. Gosh, my German is not that great. But this is an old German game in its original box. We've got Arcade Mania. That looks like fun. Alien Raiders. Oh, somebody who's into old video game stuff is probably going to be really into this. It's all these vintage looking video game graphics and you've got this little digital game player piece on here. Never seen this before. I'm sure they were popular for a while, but how cool is that? You basically have your own little arcade playable board game. Yeah, that's super neat. And of course, who didn't have Risk? Oh, look, there's a Hardy Boys game. That's getting back. That's a little older. Probably from the 60s or 70s. Secret of Thunder Mountain, Roulette, even a Calgary Stampede, my neck of the woods. You've got the Chuck Wagon Race game. Fun stuff. Fun stuff and games always do well at auction, so I'm sure they'll do okay over there. All right, we've got a big box here. Let's open it up and have a look. Yes, it's jam packed full of toys. Fisher Price, we got a big Tonka excavator or bucket shovel. I guess I should call it a, it's more like a, a backhoe or a hoe. Anyway, it's there, it's cool. We've got, what is this? It's a big heavy piece of equipment in here. Oh, it's a uh, Aurora Dater. Notice you put the date on, I guess it's for stamping and embossing dates into things. It's an, it's an embossing tool. Huh. Let's see, February 3rd, 1988. Last time that was used to emboss something. 
Weird, but cool. Oh, look, there's another race car set. Some nice old press steel toys. Structo Ertl Turbine Emergency Squad vehicle. Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, look, Bobby Hall hockey skates. Actually, I wonder, I had that box of assorted skates. I wonder if I had the skates to go in there. I should rethink how I'm selling that. Hmm. Now, I recognize this right away. Oh, I guess I got to get some of this other stuff out of here first. That is the uh, Sesame Street Playhouse. I don't see any figures in there right now. That should have... That's off a different set. It's off of this. Well, look, it's got the box. Oh, that's a different Playhouse box. That's for a slightly newer Sesame Street Clubhouse set, but this original box for it. I wonder if I'm gonna find the bits and pieces. There's another box set down there too. Can't tell what it is. I just have to haul all this stuff up. Fisher Price always sells fairly well. Like I said, there's lots of collectors for it, but I'll have to make sure I've got all the bits and pieces that need to go with this stuff. You know, as I was sorting all this stuff into a pile here, getting it ready to go at the door, I noticed that that roulette game that was in that box was actually made by the Nintendo Company of Japan. So that's probably like a 1960s or 70s. Before they got into video games, they were making board games and uh, other accessories and toys. It's kind of a neat thing. Very early Nintendo stuff. So Nintendo collectors out there, maybe that's one you don't have. So this is where I leave today's episode. Uh, found a whole bunch of neat stuff, got it over to the auction house, just dropped it off. Now I'm headed back home to work on round three, looking for more treasures. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we go through this epic assortment of collectibles that we picked up. And guys, I hope you're having as much fun as I am because uh, it's like a flash, a blast from the past. And uh, we're going to get this auction all ready to go for December here. So guys, take care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now.